Oh my goodness. Look at that, he's killed those trees. Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to a little bit of off the farm action here at my neighbor Tony's house. Tony. How you doing? Good to see you, man. So Tony is my neighbor and really my best friend, guys. And we're out here at his house and he has two apple trees that need a major, major pruning, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. It's been what? 10 years? At least. <laughs> so guys, today we're gonna show you how we cut back a major, major winter pruning on these apple trees here in Tony's yard. And we're gonna take you down to a plum tree in my yard that's a whole lot smaller. And we're gonna give you some tips and tricks of pruning your fruit trees. Now, I am not the end all be all when it comes to fruit tree pruning. So if you have any information you'd like to share with us, please put it down in the comment section. If not, just watch and you'll learn a little bit here and it'll be great food for thought for you guys in your fruit trees and or your flowering trees that might be in your own yard, lawn, or orchard. I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. Afraid of life, times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what Whoa. you can kiss. Tell me about these fruit trees, man. This is an apple tree, right? This is planted how many years ago, you think? Uh, 2001. 2001. Guys, this tree is huge. I'm going to say we're probably in the neighborhood of 25 feet tall. Uh, around here, we'll go over here and take a look. We're looking at a tree that's probably 10 inches around at the bottom, 10 to 12 inches around. We've got some beautiful apple wood that we'll be using in the... Uh, smoker at some point so we're going to save some of these limbs but what we really want to shoot for and tony you're okay with this right absolutely we're the, taking it back the apples were uh the trees were loaded with apples this year but they were small gotcha small apples and also it pulls these limbs down the potential for breaking the tree down and actually killing the tree is here guys so that's why we're pruning back like this yes. you really need to prune your trees at least once every few years if possible. So we're going to take this tree from zero to hero and we're gonna take a look at this tree. We're gonna prune it back. And Tony actually told me, I said, man, he said, I need to get them apple trees cut out of my yard. I said, man, just let me prune them. Don't cut them, please don't cut them. Guys, <laughs> let me know what you think about that. So if we lose one of these trees from pruning, cause this, this other tree here is gonna take a significant amount of pruning. If we lose one, Tony's totally cool with that. But no, yeah, if we lose one, no big deal. I'd like to keep it, but if we lose one, that's okay. I don't think we will. I think we're gonna show you guys the right way to do this. So let's get busy. So boys and girls, let's talk about the tools of the trade that we're gonna be using today. We've got several different pruning tools that we are gonna use. Uh, we have, this is called the Kebtech. It's a electronic pruner. This won't be used very much on this tree, but very, very handy tool, especially for somebody that might have a little arthritic hand or we're trimming back 10 or 15 trees, this is a super handy tool right here to have. So we'll be using that for a little bit of this tree and a lot of the tree down in my own yard. I'll post links to every tool we're using down in the video description for you guys. The next tool we're gonna be using is called the Steel GTA 26. This is a little battery powered handheld saw. This is something I use on the farm right there. We got a full battery. It's just a tiny little battery powered handheld saw. Great for pruning, great for keeping on the side by side, and it'll fit right in your pocket. They actually make a holster for this too. Steel GTA 26. Cannot buy this on Amazon, but you can buy it at your local steel dealer. Next thing we're gonna be using, this is the Milwaukee Fuel Hatchet. This is a really cool tool, guys. We just did a recent review and comparison. This is more of a limb cutting saw. Uh, where this is more of a pruning saw. I love this saw. I really love this saw. This is just a much more capable saw and you can see the size. It's just totally, totally different. <laughs> um, this has a cool little carrying handle, bar oil where the steel does not have bar oil and a little safety mechanism. That's it right there. Comes with the M18 battery and we've got a couple extra batteries in case we need them. This is an awesome little saw. 
Next tool we're gonna use, or we may have to use, is this Skill battery powered chainsaw right here. Everything we're using is battery powered today. Skill battery powered chainsaw. For those bigger limbs, <laughs> that we're gonna be trimming out of this tree in some cases, or for once I get them on the ground and I need to lop them off and take that wonderful apple wood home to use in the smoker that we're gonna build in the future video on the channel. So stay tuned and subscribe. Next tool we'll be using is the Echo DCST 2500 top handle saw. This is a battery powered saw. Again, pull the trigger. Awesome little saw right here, guys. This is, again, the Echo DCS T2500 top handled chainsaw. You just run it with both hands, okay? It's designed to run with both hands, and sometimes you have to reach way out with a top handled saw and just use one hand. It has a little retaining hook right here. In case you're a tree climber, you can go up the tree and have it on your belt, tool belt. The last thing that I wanna show you is something that we're gonna use to help preserve the tree, okay? So when we cut these big, big limbs off like this, we've got to seal them off. And what I'm using for sealant is rubberized undercoating from Eastwood Automotive. There'll be a link in the video description to this stuff. It's worth its weight in gold when it comes to cutting larger limbs on a tree that we're gonna prune. Let's go look at the tree. Now let's show you a little bit about what's going on here. So you see these little, uh, marks right here on the tree. This is where uh, a bird or woodpecker has come and pecked the tree and that bird will stimulate sap to flow from the tree. The sap will drip out, insects will come and get into that sap and the bird will eat the insects off of it. So that's what all these little holes are all over this tree right here. This is a big, big, beautiful apple tree right here. Now let's go over to trouble. This is trouble, trouble, trouble. What we're trying to do here with all these trees, you see how many large logs or canes are coming off of this tree. What we're trying to accomplish is just leaving three to four logs basically growing out of this. The trunk needs to split into three or four sections and it needs to be high enough to where my friend Tony can get his mower out up underneath this tree and mow without knocking his hat off or catching the roll bar on his lawnmower and flipping him over. So a lot of this has to go. A lot of it has to go. You can see right here, this is split. This is where the sap came up in the tree in the spring and we had a freeze and the tree froze with the sap in it and damaged that limb. This is a diseased limb and it needs to go, guys. Totally needs to go. This is a diseased limb. It needs to go. This is a little bit of blight. Now we want to cut that probably last. We don't want to spread any blight from our tree to any other part of a tree or any other tree. When you have a tree that has black limbs on it, it looks like mildew or mold, that is a blight. If you're having to trim out a lot of blight, do not go from tree to tree to tree with that trimmer without cleaning it. And what I do typically is I'll have a rag with some alcohol on it and I'll wipe off those pruners, those little clippers I showed you, before I go to the next tree or the next limb that doesn't have blight. Okay, we're gonna get busy. We're gonna take this guy down to three or four limbs out on the trunk. We're gonna be taking this big guy out. We're gonna be taking this guy out up to here. And basically, we want this tree about six feet around when we get done. Six feet from end to end right here. We're gonna take our hand pruner and we're gonna talk about crossover limbs. These limbs are growing up through the center of the tree. They are crossing over one another. They are lapping on top of one another. You can see one right up there also. Limbs like this that are toppling over one another, they need to go, okay? They are causing this tree harm and causing this tree to be less productive. So in the center of a tree like this, you want it to be open where light can get to every single limb possible. We wanna get rid of stuff that looks like that. When we prune in the winter, it's for growth. When we prune in the summer, it's for cutting it back. So if we wanna cut this back and not prune for growth, meaning sprouts coming out, 
we want to cut this in late August. If we want to prune or September, if we want to prune for growth, then we're going to prune it in the winter like we're doing right here. There's a massive amount of information in this video, guys, so save it to your playlist in case you need to look back at it when you do your own fruit trees. And I suggest you get on it pretty quick here in the wintertime if you want to prune for growth. Now we're going to use the chainsaws. So starting with the steel, we're going to go up in here and I'm look back at my tree and I think to myself, what do I need to cut out? I think the first limb that we're going to take out is going to be right in here. We're going to take this out back to about where these uh, um, fruiting limbs come out here and start bowing over. So we're going to take her on back just like so. You're going to see a difference in these two saws here and these two handheld saws here in just a second. A major, major difference. We'll cut this guy back for Mr. Tony to be able to drag the brush over to his brush pile over here. See what we're left with here? A mess. Okay, want to square that off. There we go, nice and pretty. When we get done, we're gonna hit that with our rubberized undercoating. <laughs> we got birds up in here flying around. Okay, so next canes that we're gonna be removing, this guy right here grows right up through the middle of the tree, bye-bye. See how close I cut that? Less room for disease. What that's gonna do is grow up and heal over, just like that. Looks like a little butt, doesn't it? That's what it's gonna do. It's gonna grow up and heal over, just like this one also. This guy right here, you got two sprouts coming off right here and this critter here. Wherever we prune and wherever we trim back, there will be little sprigs that are growing out uh, throughout the year next year. So wherever we cut back, we're gonna see little sprigs coming off of here and those will fruit, okay guys? So we need to pay attention to that. Time to break out Big Daddy here. This saw is much more capable than this little guy right here and I'm just gonna start using it. I love the Steel GTA 26. However, the Milwaukee is a much more capable saw. Half the price or maybe less than half the price than this saw, but again, you get what you pay for. When you buy something expensive, it's a lifetime tool. That's what this critter is. Let's get in here and we're just gonna start taking her down. That was a big one. <laughs> this Echo top handled saw really does a fantastic job. See what I did here? I had to take this big limb out, but I didn't want to take it down to right where I wanted it. I took it out here and now I can come in and carefully trim it back to where I want. Bam. So we'll go back in, take out any of these little guys that need to be taken out. And guys, you can see we've really, really done a number on this tree. But in years to come, this will make this tree much, much healthier. And that may still take out one more limb. This guy right here that's growing out kind of crooked, I may end up taking him out. It's best to have two, three, or four major limbs. I like to do three or four. We've got four here, 
but I'll be scratching my head just a minute before I make the final decision on that one. Now, we've got to get in here and work on this tree. I'll get you a cool time lapse of us taking out all the stuff in this tree. And you can see there's a lot of disease in this tree that we need to remove for sure, right in there, all over. guys holy macaroni what a job this was so this tree right here was improperly pruned for years and years and years we've got it cut back we'll have to address this again next year because it's going to need some love the other tree was maintained and grew a little bit better and you can see what a difference this made guys i know a lot of you are probably saying oh my goodness look at that he's killed those trees he ruined them well guys the simple fact is that this is not killing or ruining a tree it's actually pruning it back so it can do a better job and grow into a better tree next year now here's what i do with the undercoating I'll show you exactly how i seal off the ends of these larger limbs you don't need to do this on a smaller limb okay rubberized undercoating We'll go right here. We'll actually seal off this one. See that? See how that reacts? Okay. We'll actually seal off some of the old ones. This one here won't hurt a thing in the world, guys. And this will just about match the color of the tree after a few months. Rubberized undercoating. You can use just standard spray paint. Just like so. That one is completely done. We'll go on over here and address this guy. Now folks, you can see we had to take out some major, major limbs here. Major, major limb right there. Dust this guy off, dust that guy off. And when I cut this big boy, I cut it up here and then I just notched the knob off of that end. That's that piece laying right there. Shaky, shaky, shake. Isn't this fun? You cannot hurt any part of this tree by hitting it with a little bit of this rubberized undercoating. You're not gonna harm a thing. I will go back and I'll address the larger cuts. And if I nick the tree in any place, I'll cover that up too. What we're doing is ensuring this tree's survival, guys. Now, let's head down to the house and I'll show you a minor pruning job on a plum tree that I have. Folks, so you know how I learned to do this for the past 35 years of my life, my father has taught me these things that I've learned and I'm showing you here on the YouTube channel. I've also studied a lot. I've also been to Washington and worked with a fellow that had an apple orchard. I've learned this stuff over time and I'm sharing this with you in a 10 minute video, what I've learned over 35 years. I hope you guys enjoy. So guys, where we were was my neighbor Tony's house. Now we're back down here to the Stony Ridge farm. This is a beautiful plum tree that I have right here by the honeybees. Everything has a symbiotic relationship here on the farm. I'll talk a little bit about this. This is an Eastern red bud that I pruned back over the last, I guess, four years or so. This tree came up naturally. This is a persimmon tree, okay? Persimmon trees have a male and a female. Good to know, right? So we have a plum tree here, which is really tall. We have a, that's a full size plum tree. We have a plum tree over here that is not really tall. What's the difference? Okay, so these fruit trees come from a graft. The graft is right there. If you bury this up past the graft, you will get a full size fruit tree. If you only bury it below the graft, the root graft, in other words, that's not a root from a plum tree, that's a root from a different type of tree. If you prune or if you bury this up, Past that, it'll grow a full-size tree. If you don't, it will grow a smaller tree like that, a dwarf-type tree, okay? That was buried too deep. This one wasn't. We prefer the dwarf because it's easier to pick your fruit. So this tree hasn't been pruned back in quite some time, and you can see there are sprigs crossing over each other, and we're about to flower, guys. So we are a little bit late on this prune, but that's okay. What we're going to do is show you just a few tips and tricks on this tree. I'm not going to do a full prune on this, but I want to show you exactly the th uh, thought process behind what we've got to do. So 
we've got a lot of growth in the center of this tree that will not get sunlight. We've got crossover limbs just like this. Every one of these will be a flower and a piece of fruit. Imagine all that fruit on this tree. It's just too much for the tree. We'll get better fruit if we prune correctly. So we'll cut this one that's crossing over. Clip that guy off. Get him out of the way. See this one growing? It's shaded by the other ones. Okay, we don't need to worry about painting over these ones right here. We just need to get the growth that's up here in the center of the tree. It's just not gonna be very productive. Okay, look at this fruiting cane right here. We've got the same principles on this tree as we would have on the apple tree. We want to have three or four, I misspoke earlier when I said two, we want to have three or four major fruiting limbs and those major fruiting limbs will be the ones that feed the entire tree. We want to cut this back to where the nutrients that come from the soil and the sun produce the maximum amount of high quality fruit. There's the tree. You saw what it looked like before. This is what it looks like after. And you guys can see, I left a few options here. One, two, three, four major sprigs off of this tree. Ideally, they would be angled out just a little bit more. I may end up taking this one out and I may end up taking another one out so I can get under here with the mower, but we shall see. Actually, I'm gonna take that out because it's disease. You can see what came off of here, but the idea is to promote growth for next year and years to come produce better, larger, and sweeter fruit. So allowing this tree to grow at the trunk and not grow out here in the sticks, up in the air. Grow at the trunk and make it manageable where you can pick the fruit instead of getting out here with a ladder and falling off to get a plump. What do you think, man? Great. <laughs> Hacked them I down, am huh? Well pleased. A good neighbor would help you get the brush up. So. I'll be back once we go and get everything done at my place and we'll get your brush up here for you too. Might bring the wood chipper up, I don't know. Sounds like a plan to me. Right on. Guys, we'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. Just having some fun, helping out a neighbor and showing you guys what I do to prune trees. A major pruning and a minor pruning. Hope you enjoy. This is a great, very <laughs> knowledgeable person right here. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it, man. Take care, guys. Woo! Ooh. There it is. Yo, come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge.